In today's video, we're gonna learn how to get started with the calendar in Microsoft Outlook. Whether you've been using Outlook for a while or you're just using it for the first time, this video is gonna have something for you. We're gonna go through a range of tips and tricks to help speed up your workflow and make you a lot more proficient using the calendar in Outlook. A few of the things we're gonna look at are of course, looking at the view and navigating your calendar, creating meetings and recurring meetings, sharing your calendar, sharing appointments, and a lot more. Of course, if you like this video, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. If you're in a supercharged way as your computer, hit that subscribe button as well. With that being said, let's get into this. So at the time of recording this video, there are actually two versions of Microsoft Outlook that are out, the traditional 365 desktop application and the new Outlook application too. In this video, we're gonna use the traditional 365 desktop app because that's what most people are using, but the tips and tricks from today will work on the new version as well. So what we're gonna do now is of course, get into our calendar and just open up Outlook for the first time. You can see here that we are in Microsoft Outlook and on the left-hand side, we have the navigation pane. We can see our mail, our calendar, our people, our tasks to do and more. The second option from the top is our calendar and we're simply gonna open this up. If you leave your mouse there and just hover over it, you actually get a preview of your calendar. And if you select on it, this will take you straight to your calendar. So let's, before we dig into anything, let's have an understanding of the view here. At the top of your calendar, you have things like file, which is gonna take you into your settings of Outlook, home, which is we're gonna spend most of our time in today because you can see you can create appointments here, you can change the view, you can add and share calendars. You have the send and receive options, you have your folder here, which allows you to do things like create new calendars and copy calendars. View, which helps you adjust the view of your calendar and of Outlook. And of course, help where you can get help, suggestions, and a lot more. In the Home tab, the first thing I wanna look at here is in the middle, you have the Arrange section. Because right now, our calendar is actually set to a month view, which shows us a lot of information and for me, it feels like a bit of information overload. So you can actually arrange the view of your calendar by calendar by selecting on day, which is gonna show you the calendar just for today. Your work week, which is gonna show you your Monday to Friday. Your week, which also includes the weekends, your month, or if you wanted to, you can use your schedule view as well. I find the most common way to use this is leaving it in your work week, because you can see what you have on Monday to Friday. And of course, if you work on weekends, you can choose to have the whole week there as well. Another way to adjust the calendar is of course, on the right hand side, so just under our arrange section where we have our calendar, on the right hand side, there's a drop down menu, and you can also choose to adjust the view from here as well. So you have two ways of adjusting the view, but I think the work week is the most appropriate, or of course, if you work weekends as well, keep it on just the standard week. There are two ways of actually navigating through uh, two different weeks. And the first one here is where it says the date, 8th to 14th of January, you have a little toggle button left and right, and that lets you jump forward different weeks. Or if you wanted to quickly jump back to today's date, you can see here you have the button of today, and that will bring you straight to today. One way of knowing that you're on today is that there is a little blue outline on the day, and you have this little black bar that shows you the time of your appointment as well. The other way of navigating through your calendar is of course this menu on the left hand side that actually shows you two months in advance, today and next month. And you can use the arrows here to jump forward as well. And you can select on a specific date and it will move your calendar view to there too. Here up to the December date or up to the date, there's also a little minimize folder pane. So if you select on that, it will minimize that calendar view. Or if you select on the expand option, it pulls it back out as well. And then you select on the pin here, and then that locks it back into place. Then we'll just simply select on today, and that will bring us straight to today. Really cool, really simple, but really effective. If we're gonna look further down here, you can see you have my calendar, which shows you your calendar right now. But also if you have other calendars that have been shared with you, you can choose to select your team calendars as well. If you select on the whole team, depending on how big it is, your view is gonna change into this crazy view that's loading, or you can select on the drop down menu and simply select on a person that you're after, like Alex, for example, and you can get their calendar view side by side next to yours. And this is a great way of actually checking your colleagues' calendars, and then you can compare what their day looks like with yours as well. What you see here is our view right now between myself and Alex, we have our views loading side by side, and this is great, and this will take a little bit of time to load for the first time. 
but sometimes you want to overlap these dates as well. So I'm also going to bring in Bianca's calendar because maybe I want to find time with Bianca, myself and Alex. And using this calendar view could be a little bit cumbersome. But what you'll see here is next to the person's name, there is that arrow called overlay mode. And if we select these, it's really quite cool that what happens is the overlay mode shows you your calendar, Alex's calendar and Bianca's calendar, even though that's not working right now. So you can actually see what both of your weeks look like together. And of course, if we scroll through, you can continue seeing their dates as well. So this makes it a lot easier to find out when there's free time for the both of you, the three of you, or however many people you have that you're looking for. Uh, I'm simply gonna select on X to close out of Alex and Bianca's calendar because we don't need that anymore for today. But again, to do that, you simply select on the person's calendar in your team and then their view will pop up. You can of course choose to have it in the overlay view or you can press that arrow to go back to side by side or you can just go X and get out of their view completely. If you wanted to share your calendar with a teammate, so right now, because we are in a team in our company portal, um, we are automatically given access to our team members' uh, calendars, but this really depends on each organization and how it's set up. But if you wanted to share your calendar with somebody, in our home tab at the top, on the right-hand side, you'll see third from the right, you have the option of share calendar. If we drop down the option of share calendar, you can actually choose to select on your calendar here, and then you can send this to somebody, and you can choose what level of permission they can see when they actually get access to your calendar. So you can choose to share your calendar with someone, and they can only view when you're busy. They can view the title and location. They can view all your details, or if you want to give them delegate permissions, they can actually select on, or you can select on can edit, and then you can share your calendar with someone by using one of these. I'm gonna put this on, I actually think it's great when you share it with people uh, and let them see all the details and then simply select on add, especially if it's someone you work with quite a bit. And then I'm just gonna find Christy here because we wanna give Christy access to our calendar. I'll double select on Christy's name. You can of course add a few people in if you wanted to and simply select on okay. This is now gonna send a copy of your calendar to their calendar as well. So on the left-hand side of Christy, Brian, and Alan's calendar, they can see your calendar just like we saw our team. We're gonna select on apply, select on okay, and then this won't change your view, but pretty soon they'll have access to see your calendar, just like you have the option here of my calendar and team's calendar. Those three people will have access to yours as well. If you wanted to edit their permissions, you can simply drop down the calendar options of share calendar, go back to calendar one more time, and then find the person, and then you can actually just remove them because you don't want them to have access to your calendar anymore. Select on apply, and go okay. If you wanted to ask access to a colleague's calendar and they haven't given it to you, two ways I would go about this. The first one I'd actually recommend is asking them to hit the share button on their computer, selecting calendar, and then sharing their calendar with you, and choosing the level of permission they're happy to give you. If not, you can actually select on the option of add calendar, which is right next to share. And then you can choose to share from an address book, a room list, an internet, more. Most commonly, you're gonna use from address book. And then you're gonna scroll through and find the person that you're after. In this example, we're gonna select on Christy Klein. And then we're simply gonna select on okay. This is gonna load Christy's calendar. You can see it's just popped up here under shared calendar. And now we get access to Christy's calendar, but because she hasn't given us access to it, but we've pulled it in, we can only see when she's busy. If she selects on the share calendar option and gives you permission, she can obviously give you more permission where you can view all her details or even edit it if you wanted to as well. But in this example, we're just pulling in by selecting on add calendar, finding the employee from the address book, and then just selecting on their name and you see that it appears here on the left-hand side under shared calendars. If we don't wanna see Christy's calendar anymore, we simply uncheck her name, and then we go back to our view. To create an appointment with your Microsoft Outlook calendar is really quite easy. You have two ways of doing this. The first way is in the top left-hand corner, selecting on new appointment and new meeting, or you can even use the keyboard shortcut control plus N, and that will open up the new appointment button. Or if you wanna uh, choose a specific date and time, we're gonna find the time here, we're gonna say Wednesday the 17th at 9.30, double click on that spot, 
and this is gonna open up a new appointment window. But the cool thing is it's gonna open up on that day and that time. And here you can go ahead and just create a calendar. This is a demo. You can add a location. If your organization had meeting rooms, you could book the name of that meeting room, or you could say a local address. So cafe, cool, or anything like that. And then of course here you can add details into that calendar. Uh, and then right now, this is just for yourself. If you wanted to add somebody to this meeting, you simply select on the invite attendees option, and then you put in a few people's details, and you can choose to have them required or as optional, and then you can go ahead and send. Right now, we're gonna send this as just a meeting, but it doesn't have any Teams or digital links, so there's no way of dialing into this call. This is for a physical meeting. So if we hit send, this will send it across and you'll see that we have this is a demo at Wednesday 9.30. And if we hover our mouse over it, it gives us some of the details there as well. We can of course edit this by double clicking on this is a demo. It's gonna open up that window again. And then you can say, oh, I forgot to add that Teams meeting invite. And then you can simply select on Teams and then you can just drop in a meeting link. And you'll see what will happen is that once you select on the Teams meeting, it will create a link in your calendar. So you can say, I've added in the meeting. If you need it to play around with the meeting options, you can select it from here. But for this demo, we're not gonna go through the options. And then you can hit send, and this will send an update. If you needed to change the date or the time, you can also select on these items here by choosing the date, or you can drop down and change the time frame as well. Once you're done editing, you can simply hit send, or if you don't wanna have this meeting anymore, you can select on cancel as well. For this example, I'm just gonna hit on send and then off it goes. One cool way of actually responding and replying to meetings that are in your calendar but you haven't responded to them yet is actually hovering over them, right clicking and then choosing an action. You will see here that this is a demo and loop taking demo, loop note demo, sorry. These are dark blue because these have been accepted but there are a few meetings in here that as you'll see here when we hover over, it says this meeting has not been accepted. If you wanted to quickly accept or decline a meeting, you can right click on it in your calendar and then you can scroll down to accept, tentatively decline, decline it, propose a new time or all of these actions. So this is a really quick way to jump into your calendar, see what you have on for the week and then quickly say you're going to be there. Uh, you could respond to the occurrence or the series if it's repeating you could decline it or you could propose a new time. For this example, I'm gonna re respond to the series and go respond now. And you see design off uh, offsite is now solid because I've responded to it. If we wanted to edit our meeting, we could select on it. And up the top here, we get a range of options to edit it. So we can cancel, forward, join it, change our contacts, or we could even right click on it. And then we can get more of those options here as well. Another quick tip is maybe you wanted to extend the time of this meeting or move it around. You can actually grab it and drag it and drop it somewhere else and that will move it to that time. Then it'll ask you if you wanna uh, make the following changes. We'll say save and send the update or you can say don't save. For this example, we'll save and go okay. Maybe you wanted to extend the time of it as well. You can actually select on the meeting and then drag the time further down and then you can get that same option of uh, making the changes, you can go save changes and update, okay. It's gonna pop up and ask you to send the update. We'll simply select on send, and now the meeting time and the date has been changed. If you wanted to create a recurring meeting that wasn't a once off, but happened uh, every day, every week, every month, or at a different time frame, you can create a brand new meeting, or for this example, we're actually gonna do it on this, uh, this is a demo example. We're gonna open this meeting up, and then we're gonna edit it. So you can see here that when we create the meeting, when you select the date and the time, there's also a button here that says make recurring. If you select on make recurring, this will open it up and ask you to choose the start and the end date, the duration of it, and then also what the occurrence parent, and then of course what the recurring pattern looks like. You could choose to run this meeting every week on a Wednesday, and it's gonna start Wednesday the 17th, and it could end by, you could pick a date, you could pick the number of occurrences or you could say no end date at all. I'm gonna select on no end date on this and go okay. 
and then I'm gonna hit send update and then this will create a recurring meeting in people's calendars that will happen every Wednesday from 12 to 1.30 and it's gonna have the same people invited. So if we jump forward to next week and the week after and the week after, you can see we have the recurring meeting if this is a demo. And if you wanted to cancel or edit it, you can simply right click on that meeting and then you can choose to cancel meeting. You could choose to cancel it for the day, which would be canceling the occurrence, or you could choose to cancel it altogether, and that's called canceling the series. But this is a really easy way of creating a recurring meeting that happens whenever you need it to reoccur. Let's jump back to today's date. The last thing I wanna show you for today's video is actually how you can turn every meeting into a Teams meeting link, so that whenever you create a new meeting or a new appointment, you will have automatically generated a Teams link as well, which means that if you forget to put it in, it's okay, because it will naturally pop up. To do this, we're actually gonna go into our file into the top left-hand corner and scroll down to where it says options. From options, we're gonna go under the calendar settings and this is where you can get really granular with your calendar settings, but we're not gonna get into all of this today. And then we're gonna select on the option here called add online meetings to all meetings. And then you can select on the meeting provider. And then for this example, we only have Microsoft Teams installed. We're gonna select on okay. And then we're gonna go okay. This means that whenever we select on a brand new meeting, we open up the new meetings option in our calendar and then it automatically populates with a Microsoft Teams meeting link. So this means that you can add in the people that are gonna be in that call and then you can hit send and you don't have to worry about uh, hitting the button of uh, adding a Teams meeting to it. It will automatically occur. So I'm just gonna hit send on this to show you what that looks like. And then you see we have another Teams meeting that's popped up. Let's just dismiss that for now. So whenever you select on a new meeting, I'll show you one more time. If you have that option turned on, Microsoft Teams meeting links will automatically appear in that uh, email before you send it out. So you're not gonna forget to add a Teams meeting link because it's automatic. When it comes to being proficient with the Microsoft Outlook calendar, there is a lot to learn, but hopefully this video has helped you along your way. Of course, if there's other things you're interested in learning, let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.